When managers fail to meet their goals, more often than not, people problems are to blame. Being a great leader or manager requires a number of skill sets. There is your technical skill set, such as your business skills. There is your leadership skill set, how to get other people to follow you and meet organizational goals and manage them and also manage yourself. For being a great leader is not just about managing other people, it has very much to do with yourself. And that brings us to the third skill set, the personal skill set. Research shows that in the top tier management, personal skills such as empathy and self-regulation is what sets apart the great leaders from the average. And let's be honest, today, being aware and self-regulate is probably one of the most challenging skills for managers. Because we're working under pressure most of the time. At least that is the truth for most of the top executives I work with. Today, challenges such as filtering information, getting communication across, relationship with people, dealing with change and innovation are key challenges for managers. When you are in change, under pressure, stressed or just overloaded with information and lots of work to do, what happens is that your brain will optimize your energy consumption. Because though the brain is just taking up about 4% of your body mass, it's using 20% of your energy. And what it will do is it will switch from awareness to autopilot. Your awareness is located in your frontal lobes and they spend more energy than the elder part of your brain. So a lot of the things you'll do, you will do automatically without being aware, without seeing yourself or seeing other people. And that's when the problem starts occurring. So what we will do is that we will train your awareness. And I have a process on how to do that. Finally, I'll give you three leadership qualities to work with here and now, no matter who you are. This is my leadership development model. It has three steps. First, we define and we build on your strength. You are who you are and you reached where you are now by being who you are. So we don't want to pull that completely apart and I'm not going to change you completely, but I'm going to help you become a stronger version of yourself. The second step is that we start looking at your shadow side, your less flattering behaviors and aspect to see if there are things that, that can be changed or diminished a little bit, maybe turned down sometimes. And thirdly, we'll build new skills, strengths, tools, so you'll become an enhanced version of yourself. We're going to build on who you are, you're going to stay the same, but you're going to be a stronger version of yourself, a leader with more qualities and who creates more results. Finally, I'll give you three leadership qualities to work with here and now, no matter who you are. The first quality is to focus on feedback rather than chit-chat. Some managers think that chit-chat is the glue in relationships and it does serve some purposes and it has functions, but basically employees, they want to be seen and heard and they want to get feedback. When you provide feedback, do it in a way where they feel safe, don't attack people, don't criticize. If you do that, it will be impossible for them to actually understand what you're saying because their brain will move from awareness to autopilot. It will shut down and move into stress. But feedback in general is a good thing and it's much more important than chit-chat. Very often chit-chat can also be disturbing. You're not the only one who is trying to deal with a lot of information and work overload. The people who work for you are most likely also trying to deal with it. And 
if you force them to chit chat, let's say for example to have like an ongoing chat on um, on Skype or another digital device, it will ongoingly disturb them. I know that there are managers and leaders who have this practice, especially in long distance teams. And help instead help that this is the second leadership skill. Create room for focus, both for yourself but also for the people who work for you. Make sure that there are time slots in the calendar where people can focus on their work and work undisturbed, where they don't have to pick up the phone, where they don't have to answer email, or they don't have to chit chat. My third advice, the leadership skill you can work with, is probably the most defining leadership skill. It's about moving from autopilot to awareness. It's something you can work with for the rest of your life because life keeps challenging us and when life challenges us, we can get stressed under pressure and that will close down the frontal lobes of your brain where you have your ability to th see things from different perspectives, think logically, analytically. So you want to be calm and aware rather than thinking feeling or acting from autopilot. Practicing it is an ongoing practice and what you can do is you can keep on switching your attention saying, oh, I was unattentive, I was unaware, I'm just going to breathe, I'm just going to be a little calm and I'm going to watch myself even though I might going to see something I don't like. Finally, there's a little bonus here which is that's always something you can improve with yourself and development is wonderful and it does make you a stronger version of yourself. But also give yourself a break, don't be too hard on yourself, celebrate your victories, be happy for who you are and that's going to bring more success and joy to your life.